Hi, this is Andy Reagan, and we're going to be doing a demo of LaTeX. Uh, I'm assuming you know you want to get started use, doing your math homework in LaTeX, or you've tried doing it and having some some issues getting it to compile. And so I'm going to be using MicTech and Windshell. If you don't have MicTech, um, the best way to get it is to go to Google and Google uh, MicTech, MicTech project page. Um, go ahead and download and install that. And Windshell is just as easy to find. I don't know why it's doing that. Go to Google and search for Windshell. And you're going to want to download Windshell and install it for the operating system you're using. And I have made this file available. This is the file we're going to be working with. It's called Tech Demo. So once you've installed the two programs, go ahead and open it. And we should see, make it fit in here, is this. And it's pretty basic. Um, you can put your name here, and it'll print out your name for the title of the paper, um, the homework or whatever. And I'm going to put my name in there. Um, this is just some stuff you need to include, but if you're just looking to get started, just leave that there. Um, I've set that up and make it the title whatever you're doing. So, you know, homework one or something. And so, um, once you begin begin document, you're going to want to use this make title. Everything in LaTeX kind of has this backslash, um, back, or it's, uh, yeah, backslash, and then whatever, and then the command. So, we're going to want to make a numbered list. So say our homework starts with number one, we're going to begin what's called an enumerate environment. So we want to say begin, and then you want to use a bracket, enumerate, close that bracket. And this is going to begin the uh, enumerate environment, and you can make um, itemized lists with it. Whenever you begin an environment like this, you want to make sure to end it. So you're going to end enumerate. And in between here, to make new items, to make new um, new problems, for example, you say item. And that's going to put out, because it's the first item, it's going to put a number one. So say this is, you know, item number one, problem, problem one. We're going to say problem number one. And you notice that I had to use a backslash here before the pound sign, because there are certain characters in the tech that are reserved for the program. And so you're going to have to preface them with a backslash. Now the biggest thing is when we can start typing math in it, because that's where it becomes really useful. So there are a couple ways to begin a math environment. And the first is a way that's pretty long to write out. You be, say begin um, equation. And you want that's the equation environment. And it'll number your equations unless you put a star. So you gotta make sure to put a star when you close it too. So if you begin an equation, it's gonna begin an equation on a new line and gonna make sure you close equation star and if you weren't to put a star you can see the error it's gonna give you if you just gave it some math um, let's give it a, a quick math command and um, something like that and if you hit F5 that'll do a quick LaTeX compile and you see it's gonna, it's gonna give you an error here and it's gonna say you know, begin equation ended by end equation, begin equation star. So to fit, if you ever see that, you just want to end equation star. So that's the first way to in insert an equation. And you can see what that's going to look like real quick by pressing F11. And that will compile to a PDF and open the PDF file. So I'm going to pull it in the window here. And you can see it's homework one, Andy Reagan, prints the date. And here we have number one, problem number one, and the equation it put in the middle. So that's putting it out in an equation, lim soup a sub n. So um, that's the first way. And a shorthand for this begin equation is just do um, backslash open bracket, open uh, one of these things, and backslash close one of them. And that'll do an equation too. It, it, this will be this will be the same thing. So if we compile that again, F11, we'll see we have we have the same thing going on. Um, there's a third way to do equations, and that's with the a line environment. So, and again, I'm not. I'm going to use a star because I'm not numbering it. And the align environment has a couple things with it. So, if I want to, I'm working with the limit superior of some sequence a n. And this align star allows you to make equations that are that are lined up. So, and is going to be the symbol that um, everything lines up with. And then, so I want to say that equals you know b sub n. And then I'm going to end that line with two backslashes. And I can, you know, say something else that'll line up with the character. Say this and equals c sub n. And then I want to, we'll do some more for demonstration. I'm just making stuff up. And then you're going to have to do the end, end your align where you would create a new row. So end align star. 
and this this is going to line up the and symbols and um, it's the third way to do equations so again you can always check that you didn't do anything wrong by pressing F F5 and you see at the bottom there are no errors so press F11 it'll move that to a PDF tech demo and you can see that it's lined up the and signs here in the equation environment um, the other way to include math is a way that you'd be doing it a lot it's in line so say in this first problem I wanted to include math say begin problem I want to show I want to have this on the same the same line as the problem I want to say the problem statement and I don't want it to be in in the middle of the screen I want it to be in the line of text so if I'm going to do in the line of text say show um, dollar signs begin and end the inline equation environment so whatever's between them is going to be in the math environment and so if I want to do a sub n you know I'm using the um, this little subscript delimiter here so anything that follows that the if there's one character after it it's going to be a subscript so this n is going to be a subscript um, and similarly if you want to use a superscript use the up the up arrow um, caret and this will be a n to the k so if I wanted to um, if I want to put more than n say I want to make it you know the n sub j sequence I have to if you want to include more than one thing after um, a, subs a subscript or a superscript you have to include that in brackets and let's actually use a lot of brackets like for here here for example and um, so you can see what this looks like if I wanted it up to the k sub j power um, it's going to look like that, and this is going to be in in line with the equation. So put some more text there, and you see it'll be in line with this. So go ahead and compile that, and you'll see that we have a sub n j to the k j, and some text. Um, some other things to note are if say um, a lot of times you'll, you'll get errors you get lots of like alignment errors and stuff say if I was to leave one of these brackets off and accidentally put a a uh, parenthesis that's a pretty common thing to do and that'll give you an error so for example let's let's try this and see what it does I'm just gonna press F5 and it gets an error if I tried to compile it to PDF it wouldn't even work so here it's telling me I missed a bracket and oftentimes and it tells me I missed it on line 10 so oftentimes um, it's a pretty hard error to find and sometimes it won't even tell you that you missed a bracket but if your assignment won't compile one of the first things to go check is that you missed a bracket and you can see it uh, compiles with no errors that's uh... that's one of the biggest ways i got errors when i was first starting to to learn latex um, if there's for example a symbol you don't know how to use say like i want to say something is less than or equal something well i know that happens to be backslash less than or equal leq but if you didn't know that it's pretty easy to find things and I do this all the time um, you just go out to Google you just go out to your to your Google I'm not sure why it's my home page um, go to Google and just search LaTeX less than or equal and you'll probably get you know some sort of intro page and it'll have symbols and it's telling you the same thing to begin a line but if I just want to search for LaTeX symbols, just get a directory of symbols. Symbols that you can use. Um, let's see if this is a good one. Yeah, so here you got lots of symbols. So if I want to say less than or equal to, um, well, I guess you could just use LE, less or equal. Um, you don't even need to use the Q. Although, I'm pretty sure the equal will, the Q will work. So let's try that. Let's just make sure. What I did works. I'm pretty sure it does. Oh, it's my old homework. Or the one I was working on. Um, nope, that's the same line. So I want tech demo. Okay, so you can see that's a less than or equal to. And similarly, um, Ellie will probably could do the same thing. And yeah, same thing. So that's how you use those symbols. And once you're there, there's you pretty much just learn more of the symbols and you begin to write and see what you're writing and how it'll compile. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if there's any anything else that's that's useful, but I think that's pretty much it. You're allowed to nest um, enumerate environments. So say problem one had a part A, I can begin and enumerate, and I can put another item in there. And this one will print out as A item A. If I wanted, for example, the first item I was going to do was a B, I'd use brackets include 
include the B, what I want to print, when I want to print the parentheses, say I wanted um, item B to be a sub-item of problem 1, which is going to print out as number 1, um, I could do it like this. And you'll see, F5, make sure it's good, F11 to compile, and you can see it printed out a sub-item sub of B. And if I had left the B out, it would print A. I'm not sure what it will do if I do another one after. Um, after I already put a B, but let's see. It's okay with it and compile, and it put an item A. So I guess you got to make sure to uh, to stick with stick with numbering yourselves if you skip one. There might be a way to do a better job than that. Um, and if you're looking to do matrices and stuff like that, I think the best way to learn how to do them is just just Google it, and it'll it'll work for you. Um, to do a matrix, you use the array. And it has its own little quirks, but say I want to make a matrix of size two by two, I'll put in a left brace, and I'll do. I say I want to do the identity matrix. I'll put in the first row separated by the entries in the first row separated by the and sign, and that row with a two two uh, forward slashes, and then I um two back slashes, and then I'll do the second row zero one, and I'll. I want to include a right brace or a right thing there and end array. Let's see if that works. Up oh, now it gave me six errors. So now let's see what we'll do here. Okay, well it says a legal character in the array missing dollar sign inserted. So I think it wanted this to be in a math environment. So let's see if we put it in the brackets. What that does. Less errors. Um, missing alignment tabs. Okay, let's try moving these out. And you kind of just play around with it, and you'll get stuff to compile. Um, and it gets quicker once you play around with it. So there, we're down to we're down to three errors. A legal character in array argument. So begin array, end array. Okay, put them on separate lines. Let's see what we got here. This is a test. I'm on the camera. I don't know. It's uh, not sure why it doesn't like it. Oh, I think I need to tell it that I want the array to be. Maybe let's try this. Legal character and array argument. So I think I need to tell it how big the array is. Um, so let's check real quick. This is how I would check this. So let's go to Google and then uh, let's say matrices, matrix in LaTeX. Matrices and other arrays. Okay, here's an example. And so you begin array. Yeah, you got to tell how many columns you want. That's what I messed up. So you want two columns. Um, so let's try this. Zoom. Okay, and it worked. Um, so I mean, generally just playing around, you'll figure out how to do stuff like that. And here you have the identity matrix. Um, if you want to include it in line. Maybe if we um, did it in a new item, we say here's we want to say it's i2, i sub 2 equals this. Um, one of the other common things to do, oh, I forgot to mention is whenever you do a command, um, you want to make sure to leave a space after it so it doesn't try to lop something on your command. That'll probably give you errors too. Um, let's say we try to include this in inline text, compile it, no errors. So you can see in item number two it says here's i2, and it prints it out. So once you once you got this down, it's not that hard to, to type out your homework. Um, for doing arrays or anything like that, you generally can just just Google it um, and play around. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. I hope this was was somewhat helpful. And uh, thanks. All right, bye.